Sophia, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are going to be creating a card with a floating frame without using the popular product Press and Seal. So I'm going to start off here. I am going to heat emboss some flowers. So I just want to use my little anti-static pouch to make sure that no little pieces of embossing powder cling where they shouldn't be. And I'm using that stamp set that I showed at the beginning and some Versamark ink, which is just a sticky embossing ink. There's lots of different brands that you could use. And I'm just stamping them down onto some scrap paper. Now, never mind the shape of it. It's just a scrap piece of 80 pound Nina Solar White. Use whatever paper that you have uh, that is good for heat embossing. And I'm going to tip over some white fine detail embossing powder. This one happens to be from WOW. And then I'm going to do the same to make sure that I have plenty of flowers and leaves for my floating frame. Now you may already have some bits and pieces cut out ready to go and you could skip this step or some pre-made or pre-purchased um, bits and pieces that you're going to use. So if you already have that, then you are one step ahead. But I thoroughly enjoy this uh, first stage of the process too. So that's what I'm going to do. As I said, I'm just using some scrap bits and pieces and then making sure that I have plenty of flowers and leaves ready to go. Once I've done that, I'm going to need to color these pieces. Now, there are lots of different ways that you could do it. You could use alcohol markers. You could use zig markers. You could use um, distress crayons. You could use watercolor pencils or just normal coloring pencils. The possibilities are completely endless. And these flowers really lend themselves to... Um, lots of different coloring methods. Before I start that, just because I want it to dry, I have taken a piece of watercolor cardstock and my Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide Ink, and I have just pressed it down onto an acrylic block, and I'm using a paintbrush to put some over my watercolor paper and create a nice, sort of blotchy, uneven background. Uh, I use a paintbrush because I like things to be nice and controlled and even, <laughs> but um, you could also do the smushing technique or anything like that, or even just use a piece of pre-made paper is fine as well. You certainly don't have to make your own. And I think that's something that I've been working on recently, kind of creating some pieces that aren't as controlled as I might like them to be. That's kind of a little bit out of the comfort zone for me. But yeah, so I've been enjoying kind of going into that a little bit more in a few of my pieces. But as you can see, I'm not fussing at all. <laughs> I am just going with the flow, surely. <laughs> okay, I'm not, but I'm trying to. But what I am trying to do is make sure that there is no big bold spots of the blue ink because I don't want it to take away anything from the frame. And I do also need to remember that Distress Oxides will dry back a little bit and be a little bit uh, duller and not quite as bright as when you first have them wet on your paper. So I'm going to leave that there roughly and put it aside to dry whilst I colour all of my flowers and leaves. And the colours of Oxide I'm going to use for that is Worn Lipstick, Shaded Lilac, Picked Raspberry, Squeezed Lemonade, Spun Sugar and Seedless Preserves. And these are just kind of pinks, purples, and yellows that I thought would look good um, against my bluish, kind of light blue background that I've created. I have really been enjoying using finger dobbers recently. I find it much easier, much quicker, and also much cleaner on my fingers uh, to use finger dobbers rather than my ink blending tools. And I purchased the storage case off AliExpress as well. And all I do is I have a light and a dark for each color. So for example, for the blues, I have a light blue and a dark blue. And if I am changing in between blues or I'm worried that it might um, stain one or the other ink pads, I just kind of give it a rub off on some scrap paper. And then I have never had any troubles with cross contamination of the colors or anything. So I've been really enjoying doing it this way. Um, as I said, it is much easier for me and definitely much, much quicker than changing out the blending foams and things like that. So I will put the links to anything I can find um, on AliExpress and the inks and things which I purchase usually from scrapbook.com. I'll put as many links as I can uh, down below. And speaking of things down in the description box, I will also have a link to our Facebook group. We have this amazing supportive group of like-minded people. So you're welcome to come and join us there. And that way is a good way so that I, along with everybody else, can see all of the amazing projects that you guys have been working on. 
So anyway, enough of that. I am getting to the end of colouring all my flowers and I am usually trying to do a couple of different colours, but you can see how quick it is. I'm not spending that much time on them. You can purchase a coordinating die set uh, that goes along with the stamp set. So that is how I'm going to be cutting out all of these flowers. And for this card, I definitely did not want any white space outside of the flowers. So that's why I'm going kind of right around them with the ink. And again, that makes it really easy when using the finger dobbers as well. For the um, greens, I've just got a light and a dark. And there's no rhyme or reason to how I'm doing it. They're quite small green leaves. And once they're cut out, you really won't notice uh, too much. It just provides a tiny little bit of variation in the color. So here are all my pieces and now I have the dies here and I am going to cut all these out off camera. Now lots of these floating frames, most of them that I've seen, they use the Press and Seal product which is a fantastic product. I have never used it myself but I've seen it in lots and lots of videos and it works brilliantly. However, I don't have it and I still wanted to create a floating frame. So I'm going to use a piece of masking paper and then I'm going to use the rectangle die that I am going to cut out the middle with. And I've just placed it there on my piece of masking paper. And my masking paper is four and a quarter by five and a half. So it's cut down to the exact size of my card front. And I'm going to place all of my flowers and leaves all around the outside of this frame. Now I do want to make sure to add some of the flowers and leaves kind of that the rectangle in the middle will cut through because that's what creates part of the magic of the card I guess. Um, so I'm definitely making sure that some of it goes over top of that frame and I'm just kind of playing around to make sure that I can fill up the frame nice and full. Uh, I want to make sure that there's no big gaps anywhere or anything that looks a bit empty and the masking paper does hold it down really really nicely so it's got a little bit of tack a really nice gentle tack but not too much that i know it's not going to rip my work or anything now here's the tricky part because i do have to take off that rectangle because obviously it needs to sit on top of all the flowers so i gently just kind of pulled it away and i did have to rearrange a couple but not too tricky at all then I have my large A2, so the four and a quarter by five and a half inch rectangle, and that is going to cut the outside of the um, card front. And I'm just going to add a little bit of low tech tape on the back of a flower there. And then I'm going to add the inside rectangle. And this is the one that I had um, whilst I was creating the frame as well. So I'm just going to put that roughly in place. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not going to be too fussy. And I'm going to send that through my die cutting machine. So now once I pull it out, it I do have to be a little bit delicate because obviously the flowers aren't stuck down, but it's pretty secure. It's pretty good, I must say. Um, so yeah, I'm really impressed with how this has turned out, and that gives us our frame ready to stick down onto our card front. Here is the card front, speaking of, and it's all nice and dry now, and I really like the way that it has dried back. And the center here is where I'm going to put my sentiment. So I kind of want to make sure it's roughly nice and even. So I'm actually going to tape this little frame here onto the card. Now I'm just going to tack it there lightly just with that one kind of hinge at the top and then put this in my Misty because I've worked hard on my background and I don't want to mess it up at this point. I have this Kelly Creates stamp set here. Now this is one from scrapbook.com and these are a really, really affordable set of stamp sets. She has a few of them and I've recently purchased them and have been really loving them. So I'm going to do the Thinking of You stamp set. This is the card that I needed this week and I'm going to stamp the Thinking first because the tail of the Y gets in the road for where I want to put my other stamps. So um, if you had space, you would just put them all together, but I just needed to stamp them separately, which is neither here nor there. That's no problem. So I'm double stamping them with some Versafine ink. It's kind of a nice navy blue ink. So I have stamped the thinking portion of the sentiment, and now I'm going to do the of you portion of it. And you could probably do this with an acrylic block as well. I still really like using both methods for stamping. I use my acrylic blocks all the time. Um, I guess having a Misty or a stamping platform of some sort is really handy, but yeah, there's definitely ways of doing it without as well. 
So now comes the fun part of wrapping it all up, and I still have that hinge there on the top of my card. I'm just going to open it up, and here are all the back sides of the flowers, and this is the reason that I did them all face down in the beginning. Now I'm going to spend a minute and speed through this for you guys and put some foam adhesive on the back of each of these flowers and leaves. Now it does look like a kind of crazy amount, but it's not that hard and it's um, a pretty easy process to do. It just takes a few minutes. Then you are going to need to take off all of the release papers, obviously, and this is kind of where the fun part is. So everything is in place and ready to go, and I find that that hinge we created with the low-tech tape is really helpful when it comes to this kind of lining it up. But I think you could just line it up by having the frame down on your table and then putting the um, card front piece straight down on it. But this way, I just take the card front piece and close it up and over, and I know that it's pretty well lined up perfectly. What I do do is I don't push too hard at all. I just kind of bring the top over, and then I turn it over to make sure that everything is lined up. Then I push everything down solidly. And this is the really fun part because you get a reveal of how beautiful this looks. So when you pull it all back, and again, it's masking paper, so it comes off pretty easily. But for me, this is definitely the wow part of the card, and it's kind of like all of that hard work has paid off. There are a couple of final little things that I am going to do to finish off this card, even though it looks beautiful as is. First of all, I need to add it onto a card base. So I'm just going to use some liquid glue, and this is the Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish, and it is in a glue bottle from AliExpress that I use. Then I'm going to add a few little gems and things just to kind of add a little bit of sparkle. These are the smaller gems from Alina Crafts on AliExpress, and I'm going to add some of these just in the tiny wee gaps of the frame. So I'm just going to add a tiny little dot of the matte medium glue, and I like this glue because it is a really strong adhesive. However, if it squirts out the side of any of the gems and things, I know that it's going to dry completely clear and won't have any shiny um, residue around it or anything like that. So I'm just adding a few. I'm not trying to go too over the top at all. I'm using a little quick stick tool. I think it's from We Are Memory Keepers. Again, I'll link it down below. And that is helping me place all of these little gems. And then the very final thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of glossy accents to the center of the flowers. And that will finish my card off for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed coming along on this little ride with me, learning how to do a floating frame card with me without using any press and seal. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Let me know what you guys think of this card in the comment section down below. Thanks. Bye.